Hello everyone! Uh, the London Chess Classic uh, began today and uh, none of the games have yet finished so I decided to show you one interesting game uh, while I'm waiting uh, for, for some of the games to finish, you know, to, to choose which one to show you as uh, so far they're all pretty uh, equal positions but it's a chess game, you never, you never know what can happen. Uh, now this game, how did I find this game? Uh, David Lada tweeted about it uh, on his Twitter page and uh, I'm also using his photos of uh, Yulia here. Uh, Yulia Schweiger is a, a woman's grandmaster from Israel. Uh, she also has the title of international master. Uh, this tournament is being held uh, in uh, Poland, in Wroclaw, or is it Wroclaw? I don't really know. Uh, and it's a tournament consisting of uh, 10 women, 10 women grandmasters, and it's quite a strong event. Uh, in this game, Yulia Schweiger is playing against Ekaterina Atalik. And uh, Ekaterina is also a very strong international master. She also has the title of uh, a woman grandmaster. She's rated somewhere around uh, 2450, although at one point she came really close to breaking the 2500 barrier. Uh, plus her husband is uh, Suat Atalik, uh, a Turkish grandmaster. Uh, that's why she's a Russian-Turkish grandmaster. She's or originally from Russia, but uh, she married a Turkish grandmaster, so uh, I, guess, I guess she's Turkish now. And, uh, you know, it always helps to have a grandmaster husband, uh, you know, free coaching and stuff. Uh, so definitely a strong player, Ekaterina, and it's quite a matchup. I believe this game was played in round two. Uh, so let's see this interesting game. Uh, we have e4, c6, uh, the Karl Khan defense. d4, d5, and e captures on d5. Uh, the exchange variation, c captures on d5, and now c4, the pawn of attack. And I think this is the first time I'm showing a game with the pawn of attack. Uh, one fun fact, uh, my brother-in-law almost defeated a grandmaster using the pawn of attack. Uh, he, I mean, he crushed him and he had a completely winning position and then he blundered. Uh, but, you know, that happens. Uh, knight to f6, uh, knight to c3, we have knight to c6, bishop to g5, and bishop to e6. Uh, guarding the d5 pawn if bishop captures on f6 occurs. Uh, bishop to e2, queen to a5 now. Uh, developing the queen, uh, also pinning this knight on c3, now knight to e4 uh, is the plan. Uh, c5, uh, we have knight to e4 now, now the threat is knight captures on c3, uh, but is it? Knight to f3 now. Uh, Yulia allows knight captures on c3, and uh, oh, is, this, is this move good? Um, Ekaterina played bishop to g4 here, but why didn't she capture the knight on c3? And it's... Uh, I don't want to say it's a mistake, uh, but let's just see what happens, because this is a pretty, uh, this is move 9, so if, if you're a player of the Karo Khan, you, you might find yourself in this position. Uh, what happens if knight captures on c3 is b captures on c3, and after queen captures on c3 check, you get bishop to d2, now with a tempo on the queen. The only square available for the queen is a3, and after queen to a3, uh, rook to b1, now white is threatening to capture the b7 pawn. And if you want to stop this somehow, for example, probably you have to allow it, but if you want to stop it, uh, you get bishop to b5. Uh, now pinning the knight, the threat is bishop captures knight and then winning the rook on b8. But there is also another threat, which you'll see. Uh, after bishop to d7 defending, now queen to c2. And the idea behind queen to c2 is to guard the d3 square. Uh, and you'll see why. After black plays something, his queen can't move anywhere. Uh, after something like a6 and bishop to a4, uh, e6, now you get bishop to c1 and the queen is trapped. You don't lose the queen, but you have to give up a piece. After knight captures, uh, now you're attacking white's queen, so you have to first capture the bishop with a check. Uh, king captures, and after knight captures and queen captures on c5, uh, you don't want to exchange queens since uh, the black king is uh, on d7. And after something like queen to b2, uh, black now has three pawns for a piece. And uh, white is better here. I mean, three pawns for a piece, that's considered to be uh, compensation in itself. But uh, there's this uh, king on d7. Uh, the rook is still undeveloped on h8. And uh, the position is better for white. But if you enjoy something like this for black, you're, you're welcome to go for it. Uh, so after knight to f3, she doesn't capture on c3. She plays the bishop to g4. And now we have bishop to d2. Knight captures on d2, knight captures, bishop captures on e2, queen cap, sorry, knight captures on e2, uh, protecting now the d4 pawn, and queen back to d8. And maybe queen to c7 was somewhat a better move, 
you know, no reason to get the queen all the way to the starting square. Uh, and uh, what do we have here? It's a pretty equal position. Okay, white knights uh, are uh, pretty clumsy placed here, uh, but both of them have uh, some nice ideas for the future. For example, knight f4, knight g3, uh, this knight can jump to f3, he can come to b3, or, or this knight can come to b1 and then c3. You know, a, a lot of options for white here. It's, it's a good position. Uh, we have castles here by Yulia and the g6 by Ekaterina, preparing to develop the dark square bishop on this strong diagonal uh, and to pressure the d4 pawn. Uh, knight to f3 now, adding more protection to the d4 pawn, bishop to g7, uh, b4 now. And uh, white is definitely going to go for some play on the queen side with moves like uh, a4, b5, uh, rook to b1 before that probably. Uh, so we have a6, stopping the immediate b5, uh, rook to b1, uh, castles by Katarina, queen d3, uh, a4 immediately was also possible here, but queen d3 is just as good, uh, developing your queen, connecting rooks, uh, it's a nice square for the queen, why not? Uh, queen d7, black does the same, uh, rook f to d1, and rook f to d8. Uh, we have knight to c3 now, now this knight will also be helping uh, with the pushing uh, towards the b5 square. Uh, h6, not allowing any knight g5 ideas, uh, h3, uh, we have g5 now, and this g5, uh, it's an interesting decision, but it's uh, it's definitely a good one. Uh, for one, you're stopping knight h4 with some uh, maybe future ideas of knight captures on g6, uh, but more importantly, sorry, uh, more importantly, you're uh, controlling the f4 square. Uh, white will at some point push b5. First a4, then b5, and then you'll have to do something about this c6 knight. Uh, Black's plan is to push e6, then play this knight uh, to e7, then go to g6, and then jump to f4. So, let's see it. Uh, we have a4 by white, e6 now. Uh, this is kind of preventing uh, b5 from really threatening that knight. Uh, b5, a captures, a captures, the knight is now attacked, knight e7. Uh, we have rook to a1. Uh, and now knight to g6, preparing uh, either e5 or knight f4, depending on what white plays. Uh, rook to a4, now uh, Yulia is threatening to double up on the a file, this is never pleasant, so rook captures on a4. Uh, knight captures on a4, and we have queen to c7. With ideas of uh, infiltrating with uh, via queen to a5, maybe adding additional protection to f4, uh, and also adding adding more uh, power to the e5 push uh, after this pawn is pushed. Uh, b6 now, kicking the queen away. Uh, we have uh, queen to c6, uh, attacking the knight on a4, uh, and knight to c3. And now you can clearly see uh, that this knight here is planning to go to b5, and from b5 uh, either to c7 or to d6. Depends on what black plays. Uh, black stops this by playing e5 now. now Knight to b5 uh, would be met with uh, e4 winning the piece. Uh, queen to b5. Yulia here offers uh, the exchange of queens and uh, Ekaterina declines this with queen to e6. And this is a good decision. If you capture the queen here, uh, captures, captures, uh, you do have, for example, e4. Uh, but after knight e1, uh, this knight is still coming to c6, uh, c7 or d6. And uh, this knight will come to c2, e3, and then will control f5 and uh, attack d5. So, definitely a better decision uh, not to trade the queens. Queen e6, <clears throat> uh, d captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and knight to d4 with a tempo on the queen. Uh, queen g6, this is uh, a very nice diagonal for the queen, knight d to e2, and queen to c2 now. Infiltrating white's position, uh, pretty much paralyzing every white piece. The knights can't move because they're protecting themselves. The c3 knight is protecting the rook on d1. So white has to do something about this. Uh, rook to c1, kicking the queen away. Uh, queen f5, and now knight back to d4 with a tempo on the queen, and queen to d3. Now, uh, Ekaterina is offering an exchange of queens, uh, but uh, this cannot be accepted. If queen captures, knight captures, uh, this comes with an attack on the rook, also you're losing the c5 pawn after the rook moves. So after queen d3, uh, knight to e2 was played, uh, rook to c8, uh, attacking the c5 pawn, uh, and queen to a4. Uh, now Yulia is threatening queen b7 to win the b7 pawn. Uh, king h7, getting the king uh, out of the back rank, not to allow any, any uh, unpleasant checks. Uh, queen a7, attacking the b7 pawn. 
And here white white is already clearly better. Uh, Yulia is better in this position and uh, black definitely should have gone for something like knight to d7. And after you capture, rook captures, rook captures and knight captures, uh, attacking the queen. Uh, also, now you have a double attack uh, on this knight. And uh, uh, unfortunately for black, white is still better because this b6 passed pawn is a monster. But this, this would have been better. Uh, after queen e7, knight to c4 was played. Okay, this is uh, still uh, coming with a double attack on the knight on d4. Uh, but queen captures on b7, now with a tempo on the rook. Uh, rook captures on c5, and uh, this is the the critical moment of the game. Uh, white is uh, completely winning here uh, with a move like queen to a7. Uh, this b pawn is winning the game. It's getting promoted. Uh, but instead of uh, queen a7, uh, Yulia played queen captures on f7, and it seems like uh, you know it's just as just as good. You know, also you won a pawn. Uh, you're uh, pinning this bishop, so bishop captures on d4 isn't possible. Uh, it seems even better than queen to a7, but there is one problem. Uh, black has the only move that actually keeps him in the game, it's knight to d6. And this comes with an attack on the queen, and also now the rook is attacking uh, the rook on c1. So you do have to do something about this, and white has only one move uh, to actually stay in the game. It's, uh, it's not a better position for white anymore. Uh, and Yulia finds it. Uh, it's queen captures on g7, giving up the queen. Uh, king captures and rook captures on c5. And uh, of course, queen to b1 check, king h2, and now black gets rid of the pa the strong passed b pawn. And uh, this game is... Uh, <laughs> now it's very interesting because white was completely winning. Uh, now the position is pretty much equal. Uh, okay, white does only have a knight and a rook for the queen. Uh, but, uh, you know, the black king uh, isn't uh, very safe, uh, the white king is perfectly safe there on h2, you know, he has a lot of pawns to defend him. Uh, pretty much uh, a, a, drawn, a drawn game, uh, but uh, it's very interesting what happens. Uh, rook captures on d5, we have knight to e4, uh, f4 now as the f2 pawn was attacked, g captures, knight captures, and uh, queen to b8, uh, pinning this knight as black can't really do anything active. Uh, knight to d6 with check, king f6, and now rook to h5, threatening rook captures h6, uh, queen to h8 defending, knight to d4, uh, knight to d6, <clears throat> knight to f3, uh, knight to f7, uh, rook b5, uh, queen to c8, uh, knight to d4, uh, queen to d7 now attacking the rook and the knight, so rook uh, to b6 check first, uh, king goes to e5, uh, 92 and it's very hard to do anything uh, against these two knights as they can always protect themselves uh, Queen c8 uh, we have knight to g6 check now uh, Yulia will improve the position of both knights uh, King to e4 and now knight to f4 now again both knights are protecting each other But only now they're a bit uh, further up the board uh, We have king to d4 uh, Rook to f6 attacking the knight queen c7 defending uh, h4 and uh, here we have another critical position in the game. Uh, there's uh, nothing really either either Yulia or Ekaterina can do in this position. You know, probably a draw is in order. I don't know if uh, any of them ever offered a draw, but uh, you know, probably both of them. It, it's pretty early in the tournament. It's round two. You know, why not take, take some chances? And with a move like Knight G5 here, it's actually it's actually a draw. Uh, you know. No one can do anything here. If you capture it, H captures, uh, black is winning this knight, and then it's really a draw. Uh, but after H4, Ekaterina played king to E4, and uh, here black is now completely lost. And Yulia finds it immediately. She plays uh, rook to E6 with check, and now it doesn't matter what black plays. Black has only two options. He can either go king to D4 or king to, e king to F5. King to F5 was played in the game, but if king to D4, uh, then rook to E7. Uh, you lose uh, you lose the knight after queen to c4 defending uh, knight to e6 check after the king moves knight to f4 check after the king moves again you simply grab the knight and now uh, you're easily winning this game with white so after rook to e6 check uh, Ekaterina played king to f5 but now it's really over uh, Yulia plays uh, king to h3 and Ekaterina Talik resigns the game in this position 
Uh, why did you resign? What's the idea? Well, uh, there is this terrible threat of g4 checkmate, and unfortunately there's nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, if you play something like uh, h5, and h5 uh, seemingly stops the idea of g4 checkmate, but it really doesn't. Uh, white has a move that uh, wins, knight to e7 check. Uh, so what do you do here? King captures on f4, or you can capture the knight and lose the queen. King captures on f4, knight to d5, forking the king and the queen, uh, it's game over. Uh, the king will come to f5, but now knight captures queen, and the knight is defending the rook, so all is well for white. Uh, another idea after king to h3, uh, maybe knight to g5 check, but again it doesn't work. Uh, simply you capture it, and after h captures, g4 is uh, checkmate again. And uh, maybe the most resilient defense after king to h3 would be something like queen to c3 check. Uh, checking the king and uh, not allowing him to push g4. But uh, now black has a problem, white plays g3. And now... Uh, the g3 pawn is protecting the f4 knight, and now this knight can come to e7 and deliver checkmate. So only move black really has is queen to a3, you still have to pin this pawn, and okay, you do have to guard e7, uh, but this only prolongs the inevitable knight to e7 check, you have to give up your queen, queen captures, rook captures, and uh, with a rook, and be being up a rook and a pawn, you're winning this game like a boss. So yeah, uh, that's the game. After queen to h3, Ekaterina Atalik resigned the game, and uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I would like to thank Tony Moe at guitar, Jared Leenum, uh, James Vasky, uh, Chris Quinkert, and uh, Anthony Mostinski for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. Uh, Jared Leenum here is uh, one of uh, the first contributors to my channel, so I'm glad after uh, a couple of months of watching my channel, you're, you're still enjoying uh, the content. Uh, thank you very much, Jared. So yeah, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with an interesting game from the London Chess Classic. See you soon.